Hey, what's up, ham fam? It's KI6NAZ, and I get asked all the time, what is a contest in ham radio? Well, if you watched my 10-hour live stream on field day in 2018, you kind of got an idea of what it is. Uh, but let's condense that down in a tinier format. Uh, you might be able to hear in the background some kind of noise going on. I get asked a lot, how do you get started with contesting? And it turns out that this weekend, November 17th, uh, is a Saturday, there is the CQ Sweepstakes Contest, and it's for phone. And the band is simply electrified uh, with, with people talking. I'm just on 20 meters right now. We can jump around a little bit. But I thought I'd walk through what you do to contest. And what better way to show you is than people that are actually contesting. So let's take a So he's calling CQ, and he's waiting for somebody to reply to him. Whiskey Alpha 6, November Papa Alpha, your number one. Bravo, NR5M, 66, South Texas. Uh, QSL, thank you. QRZ, November Romeo 5, Mexico. Kilowatt 7, Victor Uniform, number 17, Bravo, NR5M, 66, South Texas. So there you go. He said 17, Bravo. That means that contact was his 17th. And he said, Bravo. Bravo is equal to single operator high power. One operator greater than 150 watts output, no use of spotting networks. There you go. So I don't pretend like I know a lot about contesting or that I'm very good at it. Um, I understand the function and what you're supposed to do. However, on the sweepstakes here, the AWR sweepstakes, I found somebody who's a really good uh, operator. Just listen to him. Just, just listen to him run through his QSO. Basically, he's saying CQ contest, his call sign, and then there's a couple items of information that you have to exchange, which is your number of the contact or the, con the um, contact you're making, his operator station, his check, which is the last two digits of the year he was licensed, and then the location, and it's using the AWRL section um, section characters. Listen to him. So he's calling CQ. That was that was the entire exchange of information for a contact needed. So then we wait for a reply from the other side, which we can't hear because we're probably in another power station. Thank you, Kilo 5 Tango Radio. Great operator. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo Alpha 6, November Alpha Zulu, 495 United, K7 UT 59 Utah. Uh, copy, QSL. You're number 20 Alpha, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, check 07 LAX. So everything starts out simple enough. You need a radio, uh, an antenna, of course, and you need to be able to actually work a QSO. We've already talked about stuff like that. If you'd like to see uh, some more on how to make a QSO or now you got your license, now what kind of stuff, check out the links in the description and on the cards, and that'll give you some more information on that. But assuming you know how to make a contact, run a QSO, you're gonna put that in some kind of logging software or write it down by hand to be converted digital later. And then what happens at the end, days later, there's usually a limitation, a deadline when you need to submit the logs, you upload them to the ARRL and they get tabulated and posted online. There's usually a scoreboard. As far as logging goes, I like the N3FJP software. N3FJP actually produces all kinds of different software for logging different contacts. They're standalone applications, which is nice because it works out the handshake. The handshake for a contest is usually some piece of information. I highly recommend you use a logging software because it will basically do all the work of converting your list of contacts down to something called Cabrillo format, which you then upload to the ARRL through their online submission tool. There's many different contests. ARRL is not the only one that runs them, although they run a lot, and they have quirky little things. Uh, in the case of the ARRL sweepstakes, there is a mug you can buy, but only after you work all of the ARRL sections, which includes Canada. That's a very cool incentive to go out there and really try to make those QSOs, make it happen within the short period of time, which I think is only a couple of days. Now, I don't want to over inflate anybody's uh, sense of capability here. Uh, this is actually a difficult feat to work all the sections within a short amount of time, or to just rank highly in a contest alone is really going to require a pretty decent station. Case in point, I was tooling around today and I decided to start working some cues for the contest and I ended up uh, at about 21 contests. Uh, I think about 
20, uh, about 16 or 17 of the sections I worked with a couple of duplicate states or duplicate section QSOs. It's really a pursuit of people that have pretty squared away antennas and pretty po powerful rigs. So you understand I just put up my hex beam. It's a great antenna. I really like it. But I would need to have that elevated pretty high up and be backing that up with an amp, probably legal limit amp, to be able to really be competitive in the contesting scene. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't try. That's not to say you can't have fun doing it. And as I always say, the pursuit is pretty much the goal for a lot of ham radio. And this is no this is no different. It's a lot of fun to get involved with contests. In particular, field day is probably the most fun you can have in a contest. And it kind of is a contest. Couple of things to re recommend. Again, I will say the N3FJP whole batch of software that they have is really, really nice because it's no frills. It has four spaces to enter the data or five spaces to enter the data you need. And that's it. You just tab, type, tab, type, tab, type, you get to the end and then hit enter. Very simple. Sweepstakes can be a little flustering because there is a lot of information that you're exchanging and you got to listen because there are some very fast operators. Again, these are people who are competing for high scores, not just to get all of the sections. So they're trying to be as efficient as possible and you can get flustered and if you uh, if you talk out a cycle meaning if you talk over somebody because what will happen you'll hear the big booming station but you won't hear who they're talking to I'd say 20% of the time I heard the actual station that the big booming station was talking to so you got to be really mindful of what's happening and you got to wait for them to call QRZ which is basically okay I'm ready for the next call or to restate CQ um, CQ sweepstakes CQ sweepstakes or just sweeps or SS there's all kinds of different things people use also the phonetic alphabet kind of gets thrown out the window uh, a bit in sweepstakes people end up using their own replacements for phonetics which bothers some people myself included it can be confusing in some cases because everybody seems to use sugar uh, always with the sugar s is sugar in in almost everything on sweepstakes or, or uh, contesting in general so eh. so I hope you enjoyed this video there's a lot of minutia to contesting but really I have found once you get the idea of what is going on you know, listen a while before you start trying to work a queue. Um, you should just hop out there and try it. You don't need to be an expert and you'll, you'll learn fairly quickly because you kind of have to. Um, so yeah, get out there and try it. As always, this is Josh, KI6NAZ, Hosh Nasi. Thank you so much for watching. Go check out the Facebook group, the Discord, the Patreon. We've got a newsletter there. It's a dollar to get the newsletter every month. All the links are in the description. Thanks so much for watching. And if you have any comments on this or questions that you'd like to go a bit further, go look at my field day video. Um, fast forward about halfway through it when I'm actually working some cues and you'll get kind of an idea of how this all goes down. Okay, that's it. I'll talk to you later. See ya.